Okay, well, we're going to pick up where we left off. This is the second video. Um, this will be the installation, I guess. So, here's where we'll start off. First of all, inspect your cavity. I just pulled this cylinder, so I know that it's clean, but if, if you're starting fresh, you know, you took a day break, whatever, just inspect your cylinder, make sure everything's clean. Um, we removed this cylinder in the last video, and you will be installing this cylinder, substantially bigger. This is a 58, this is a 66. So your first steps are going to be to remove these studs. You've got these two studs here on the intake side and these this stud here on the exhaust side. Uh, I think that I explained in the last video how to do that, but we'll just do a little brief demo here. Um, I'm going to run one nut down on. Okay. I'll run the other nut down on here as well. Okay, now what I've done is basically just created a, a way for one nut to push against the other nut. Now what I would do is just turn this and then it will push up against that nut and actually cause pressure between the two and turn the stud instead of the, the nut. I'm not going to actually do it, but that's the steps you would take. And I'm not doing it because I'm going to reinstall this cylinder in this demo purpose. And then the opposite would be true for installing them. You would just, just leave the nuts in place, take it to the other cylinder, put them in, and use it in reverse. And then you just use this nut and tighten down, and it'll push pressure against the second one and push it on. All pretty self-explanatory, but those are the steps you take. And do that to all three of these, okay? Now, um, my first little caution is this. I'm going to try to get it so you can see it. These rings have a groove in here and it's kind of a rounded notch. Okay, that rounded notch has a purpose. There are these little locating pins on the piston and these can only be installed one way. If it's upside down it's not going to line up with that pin right and it will cause failure. So this is a very key thing. I'm not going to install it because I've explained these things are super brittle and I don't want to pack it to you and, and ship it to you and have it get damaged. So what you would do is just gently open this up, slide it down onto that groove, making sure that this is lined up with that. See that pin? See those grooves? That's your first caution. Second caution is this. You've got a arrow here, and that points towards the exhaust side. Okay, intake, exhaust. That arrow is what determines which direction. Okay, your piston. That's the first one to do. Get yourself some oil. Two stroke. A little rag. You're just going to lube this cylinder. You don't want to be dry firing a cylinder. It'll start and it'll run, but why put the pressure on it? Lube this cylinder. Make sure it's got some oil on it. Okay. I'll slide this out of the way here in just a second. Okay. Now your third caution, intake, has a little hole down there. It also sits lower than the exhaust. So intake, exhaust. Okay. But if you get confused on which side is which, the exhaust sits higher than the intake. And the intake has a little hole there. So that'll tell you your orientation. Cylinder, you get your arrow. You get your rings lined up with those pins. Okay. Now, 
you could get yourself some ring compressors and honestly that would probably make this simpler but I don't have any of this size and I, don't know, I can do it without it so take your arrow exhaust side make sure all all your silk rings are lined up so I'm gonna put just minor pressure down I don't want to put a lot of pressure I'm not trying to bind anything up but what I'm doing is compressing these rings and then I've got to slide it down past that top rib and at the same time keeping it in line with that pin so you may not be able to see everything that I'm doing here but that's effectively what I'm doing a little bitty screwdriver helps out Once you get it started, it actually goes pretty easily. I just got a little bit of pressure down while I'm doing this. I'm pushing these rings into place. Okay, there's one. Again, make sure your pin's lined up with the grooves in the ring, and it's right there. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze it, get this side over to the pin, the locating pin, squeeze it, just kind of tuck it in as I'm just barely pushing down, and it'll go in place. It's you know, it's not rocket science here. This is just I'm compressing a ring with a screwdriver rather than using ring compressors. Okay, so I'm in. That easy. Not a whole lot to it. Um, now, of course, I've I've done this a hundred times, and this is probably not not your first go, but you know, I'm sure you haven't done as many as I have, but it, it really is simple. There's not a whole lot to it. Okay, now if you wanted to put three bond on there and delete the gasket, right now is the step that you would that you would do that. And I'm going to illustrate what you need to do to figure out your clearances. I'm going to use the 66 millimeter piston to do that. Okay, so first step would be to take your wrist, wrist pin, and you can see that since it's a larger cylinder, it's a larger wrist pin. So. Okay, I'm going to take the piston without the rings installed. I'm going to point it in the direction it's supposed to go, arrow, exhaust. Okay, just going to install this wrist pin. Bad angle, so I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, just get it all in there. Don't force anything. If you're fighting it, there's something wrong. It should just slide right into place. Okay. Okay. Now I said without doing without the the gasket and without the rings, and I'm not putting the rings just simply because I don't want to have the pressure of it. I really just want to test depth right now. So I'm going to put this cylinder on, I'm going to slide it down and put it in place. Now I'm, I'm just going to use two screws because this is just a temporary situation. Okay. What I'm going to do I'm going to check the clearance on that piston and see how much room I have. Now I'm not going to tighten these down. I'm just going to run them up so they're snug and holding that cylinder in place. Okay. So what this tells me right now is this is just going to define the travel of that piston up and down. 
if there's enough clearance, it'll go past top dead center and back down. If there's not enough clearance, it'll top, it'll touch, it'll actually hit the underside of that this cylinder. So see, it, it seems to be making full revolutions without, without any trouble. So you could delete that gasket if you wanted to. I'm going to leave that up to you. Um, I'm going to install the gasket back onto the 58 when I reinstall it, but I have verified for you that your 66 millimeter piston has enough clearance to delete that gasket. But that's how you do it. And if you wanted to check the squish on it, just put a piece of solder in there, turn it over, pull the handle, it'll actually compress that piece of solder, and then you can tell how much your squish is. So that's solely going to be at your discretion. You can do that. I, I would, if I was putting this cylinder on, I would in a heartbeat. I wouldn't even think about it. But since you're installing it, that's your thought process and whatever you want to do, that's what you do. Whoops. Okay, so I'm done with the 66 millimeter piston for now. I'm just going to set all of it, set it and all of its components aside. I don't even want to don't even need to mess with it anymore. Okay, I'm gonna go back to top dead center. Take my screwdriver, push that wrist pin out again. Pull it out, get rid of it. Okay, I'm gonna set it aside. It's, it's done for this demo purpose. Okay, so our next step to reinstall the 58 now, like I said, you would replace these studs onto that cylinder. Okay, we've been over that. Um, this gets kind of tricky. If you're going to put three bond on, get your piston in this position first. Then you can apply your three bond here. You can apply it here without any fear of getting any of that three bond into those ring grooves. You do not want that to happen. If that happens, your ring is going to stick. You won't have compression something to be aware of. Put your three bond on at this point. Okay. Now, when you do that, you've got to move moderately quick. I mean, it's not going to set up on you in about 10 minutes, but you don't want this to dry before you set the cylinder down because you're going to have three bond here. You're going to have three bond here. Okay. You probably won't put this gasket back on. That's your choice. Like I said, if you want to put the gasket on and not three bond, that's your choice as well. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to put the gasket back in place. A um, couple things to note here. There's a little notch right here in this gasket, and you can see the overall shape of the intake ports. Um, biggest concern is I don't know what you even call it. It's just just a little area here inside of this cylinder, and that that is. It's your impulse line. I mean, there's no line, but that's the impulse. When the cylinder goes down, it generates air through the ports and pumps air through there and then through this hole into the carburetor. That's how it gets fuel. So you don't want your, your gasket or any of the three bond material to cover that area. And you certainly don't want to cover this hole. Okay. So we're going to take this. We've got the, our gasket in place. Needle bearings are good. They're all in place. So we're just going to set this down. I've got one of those clips installed in here. Okay, there is just a groove that that clip sits in, and that that keeps the the wrist pin from moving side to side. Okay, and that's a step you don't want to forget. I have done that before. Forgot to put one in. Toasted an engine. It happens. Okay. This is going to be a little bit tricky for you to see from this angle, but I don't have any other way to do it. Um, I'm going to take that wrist pin, slide it through there, and through this roller bearing, and then I'm going to install the E-clip right inside of there. It might be tricky to see, but it's it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, once you start doing it, you'll understand what I'm getting at. Okay, exhaust intake. 
Remember the identifiers that I showed you. Now, I'm using the 58 millimeter wrist pin. You'll be using the 66. Don't confuse those two. One is longer than the other. that's in. And I'm just going to take the point of my needle nose pliers, I'm going to stick it in that hole, and I'm just going to make sure that that's set in place. Okay, I'm going to roll this over onto its side. Now keep in mind, if you're using pre bond, you don't want to stick your fingers in it. And you don't want to, you know, wipe that goop off. It's, it's forming a gasket, so don't create a hole in that gasket if, if you use it. Little E clip. Again, self explanatory, it just compresses down into that little groove. Okay, I've found that the easiest way to do it is to start with the open end, get it down in there, use your finger to kind of guide it. Okay, keep control of that thing. If it springs out, it'll fly across the room on you. And if you don't have an extra one laying around, that is a nightmare because you're either crawling around for hours to find it or trying to find somewhere local that can supply it. I mean, I'm guessing there's not a place sitting anywhere close to you that you can just run up and pick one of those up. Okay, before you're done, make sure that it's in there. You don't want that popping out. Just visually inspect it. Make sure it's in that groove. That thing pops out, you're toasting an engine. Okay, so now we're back to setting the cylinder. And again, you may not be able to see anything just simply because of the angle, but I'll explain it as I go. Make sure your gasket's in place. You want to grab your cylinder head bolts, put them in place right now. Sorry if my fat head gets in the way. Okay, so there we go. Now, I don't know, you can do this one of two ways. You can either bring the gasket up onto the bolts or you can just slide it down and be careful of it. But you don't want to put any side to side pressure on, you want to go straight down. Okay, it should go smoothly because you've already lubed it. But the key here is to keep everything nice and straight. Don't screw up your gasket and don't wipe off your gasket material. If you have accidentally stuck your finger in it, which you probably will, um, just touch it up again. Sorry, I pushed down a little too hard. Okay, I'm just lining up my bolts. I'm going to start them in about three threads. Okay, I don't want to get them all started. I don't want to force them down yet. My biggest concern right now is making sure everything is lined up. And that's that's the key here. You don't want that gasket moving because it'll block your impulse line. And you don't want the cylinder to be out of line because it'll it'll jam up. Okay, so again, straight down. Make sure you're set in place. At this point I'm gonna slowly turn this this uh, flywheel. And what I want it to do is I want that piston to move inside there before I tighten these screws up. And it's going to actually align everything in place. So I'm going to get this, the piston to be on the downstroke. That way it's actually pulling the cylinder in line. So I hope you understood that. But I'm, I'm just going to watch the, the piston and it's just going to pull down. Okay. It's going down. I'm holding my cylinder in place and I'm just going to tighten these bolts. My first one, I'm, I'm not going to cinch it down yet. I'm just going to get it snug and I'm going to go across the engine. If, if, if you go from one to here, it, it could put pressure on that engine this way. So 
You want to work across the engine cylinder. Okay. And I've got those two snug. I'm going to do an entire cycle on this. I'm just going to let that piston move up and down because then I'll know that it's in place. If you've got this out even just a little bit, it could jam on the bottom side or on the top side. You don't want that. Okay, I didn't put any pressure on that bolt. It is literally just holding it in place right now. Again, I'm going to cycle it because I just I don't want anything to be out of line. I want this to be in the right line where it's supposed to be. Everything seems to be. I've got no worries right now. I'm going to go ahead and tighten them down. When you tighten these down, obviously there's a spec on it. And I think it's something like 15 newtons per meter. I don't know. You can check your torque specs. I'm guessing you don't have a torque T27, so they're going to be tight. Now I'm moving across the engine because I don't know how, if you've dealt with engine cylinders before, I don't, I don't have any idea your experience, but you can warp an engine head. If you tighten from here to here and then go to here to here, it, it, it could generate pressure like that, it could warp it. Just don't take the chance. Okay, those are tight. I'm just going to go over it again. Okay, they're tight. They're not going anywhere. Okay, so there's the engine install. I'm going to check it again just because I'm neurotic about things like that and I, I just don't want something to screw up. I, I always double check. Every time I take a step, I double check it. It's just my nature. Okay, so I know that the cylinder is in place. I know that the piston's moving freely. Everything's good. We're good to go. I'm going to start with the exhaust. Just because it's the simplest one to do. Exhaust. Gasket. This gasket, there's no definite way to go. I mean, it's symmetric all the way around. You can just put it on however. And it goes one on the stud. Okay. You may have to angle this a little bit to get it behind the handlebar nut. Roll your gasket up into place. Take my screw. Any of those pliers help? Just gonna make sure that I'm lined up with that gasket. I don't want to pinch it or anything. Get this started again. Um, don't tighten anything down until everything is started. It's just a good rule of thumb for anything you're working on, really. Yeah. I'll throw that. Take your nut. Put it on this stud. Hopefully you can see that. It's tough. I'm just putting a nut on that stud. So if my hands in the way, I apologize. Use this finger to hold it. Use this finger to kind of get it started. A little tricky, kind of awkward. That's just the method that I've developed. Okay. Get this started, but not tightened, because you can line up some bolts on the other side. When you flip this over, don't knock anything loose, break anything with the carburetor. Okay. So we're back to these. That one's already started, but you want to line this one up and start it. Okay. Doesn't matter which one you tighten down. Just 
tighten them down. You don't have to do it in any specific order. Okay, I'm going to leave this loose for now because I want this exhaust to be actually tight up against the cylinder before I tighten these down. I don't want I don't want this to be binding up these bolts as I'm tightening them. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one. Just kind of snug it up. I'm not going to go tight yet. And that's kind of the same principle. I don't want it to bind anything and bend and break. So we're just going to slide these back kind of at the same rate, I guess, if you will. Tighten them down together. So I'm going to tighten this one a couple turns, and then I'm going to tighten this one a couple turns. That seems to be pretty tight there. As does that. Wow, I about got cut on that. Be careful here. These are these are pokey. Okay, I'm going to flip this back over. Now is the point where you can tighten these up because they should be sitting in place where they're going to be. Now, these need to be snug, but you're putting a steel bolt into a magnesium head, so don't strip that out. There's the exhaust. Not much to it. Okay, we're going to go back to the carburetor side now. Remember when we took it off, there were several gaskets and, and all that. Hopefully you haven't lost any of them. Heat shield, hole for the impulse line. If, it, if you want to call it a line, I'm just going to call it an impulse line because that's what the other chainsaws are. Okay, impulse hole. Now, this gasket has two holes on the bottom, and that's just simply for if you install it this way or this way, it'll line up. Gasket. Don't force them. They'll want to catch on these on these uh, studs. Don't force it. You don't want to rip it. Just kind of gently finagle it. Get it on there. Okay. Heat shield. Hole goes down. Again. But this is metal, so you can go ahead and slide that on pretty hard. Another gasket. Remember your holes. One note I want to make. Um, if you take these studs out, I should say when you take these studs out and put them into the other side, into the other cylinder, the long ones go on the carburetor side. The short one will go on the exhaust side. Easy mistake. I've been there. You don't want to do it. Okay. This really can only go on one way. You can see the shape of it. This goes towards the cylinder head. Um, and the reason I say it can only go on one way is that impulse line hole is on the right side of the engine. If you turn it backwards, the impulse line is now on the left side of the engine and it won't work. So this can only go one way. Impulse line down and to the right. Okay, now you've got another gasket and this can go any way you want. There are holes designed to, to line up with that impulse line no matter which direction it is. So slide it on there. Okay, so there's that. Now, this becomes kind of tricky. You have to stand this up. And I'll kind of explain this before I 